Okay, well, um, a very good morning, a very good afternoon, and a good evening all. On behalf of Maximise Your Time and the Countdown Research Programme at the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine, we're very much looking forward to supporting you with today's webinar. We just have a couple of housekeeping notes before the session starts. First of all, closed captioning is available in English. So in the Zoom menu bar, you will see the closed captions button. Please click on this and the option of show subtitles now if you'd like to view those captions. You can increase the font size of the subtitles by clicking on the subtitle settings and moving the slider to adjust the caption size. Please note there is a few seconds delay with the captions as we have engaged a live captioner for accuracy. Uh, many thanks to our captioner for your support today. Please be aware that this session is being recorded and will be available to watch and share via the Countdown website. We are keen to encourage lots of interaction throughout today's session, so please add any questions for today's speakers into the Zoom chat. We have some time after each group of roadmap pillar presentations, so please do use the chat box throughout the presentations and then they'll be asked to our speakers towards the end. Please also try to include the name of the speaker that you would like to direct your question to. That will just help the moderation. We would like to encourage you to use social media channels to promote this session. So use the handle at NTD Countdown, at Countdown NG, at Countdown Lever One on Twitter, and the hashtag the NTDs and hashtag leave no one behind. And finally, the MYT events team, we're here to help you with any technical difficulties. So you can contact us using the chat facility on Zoom, or you can email events at myt.uk.com. I'm now delighted to hand over to Rachel to formally welcome you to the session. Thank you very much. Welcome, and thank you everybody for joining us for the final countdown webinar. Um, it has been impossible to try and work out how much research over all of the years um, to present today, but we hope to present some of the more recent research and to hear from some of the implementers that we've worked with on their reflections on Countdown and NTD research in general. Next slide. Countdown began in 2014 and was an implementation research consortium funded by UK Aid focusing on increasing equitable access to neglected tropical disease services. It brought together researchers from a range of backgrounds, policymakers, healthcare providers, and implementation research specialists from Ghana, Cameroon, Liberia, Nigeria, the UK, and the US. The four countries in West and Central Africa were purposefully chosen to have contrasting health systems and be at different stages of NTD disease control. Its vision has been to work collaboratively to produce evidence that can increase the effectiveness of NTD programmes, with a focus on reaching poor and vulnerable groups, highlighting inequities, resulting in more people accessing appropriate interventions and receiving necessary treatments. Equity, rights and responsiveness to gender and disability are core values that ran throughout all our research. Next slide. Our strategy and theory of change has been to increase the effectiveness of NTD programmes by generating and disseminating research evidence, supporting policymakers and stakeholders to incorporate evidence into new policy and to strengthen the capacity of researchers, implementers and policymakers to aid evidence based decision making. Next slide please. In the final two years, Countdown has focused on consolidating evidence from all four countries to bring out cross-country examples and to expand the research impact regionally. In Liberia and Nigeria, pilot intervention studies have, built across, have been developed and built upon the work from all the countries. An example of the accelerated programme action research that our findings showed that Alternative medicine distribution, community sensitization, and mobilization should be considered to improve equity in MDA, especially within changing contexts such as urbanization and migration. Our research also led to ensuring drugs are available at health centers. 
work on stigma and treatment barriers surrounding female genital systemsomiasis in Ghana, as built upon by the Nigerian Liberia teams where FGS services have been embedded into primary care that you will hear more about later today. In terms of pillar two from the NTD roadmap in cross-cutting approaches, we have really looked at how as many NTD programs are moving away from individual NTD vertical programs to more holistic integrated approaches, our research has aimed to look at how integration can bring strength and opportunities, while also acknowledging that there are still lessons to be learned. In terms of pillar three and increased in developing increased country ownership, Work in Ghana and Cameroon highlighted the need for inclusion and participation in the planning of MDA activities. The use of seasonal calendars and expanded community access to MDA highlighted the cru crucial role of including community and community drug disputers in the planning of MDA. Increased participation led to increased acceptability and has been shown to be core to more equitable coverage of MDA and increasing case detection. Embedding the research within the national NTD programs meant that many of the research teams had dual roles as researchers and implementers or policymakers. This helped to ensure that the research was relevant, country driven and locally owned. Next slide, please. So for today's webinar, we're going to have a series of presentations from Liberia and Nigeria, which is going to showcase some of the recent research that's taken place. We'll follow this by a panel discussion consisting of researchers and implementers who will look back at some of the key learnings of NTD research and programming over the lifetime of Countdown. To start us off, Dirk Mula, Senior, Senior Health Advisor for the Foreign and Commonwealth Development Office, is going to say a few words. Thank you, Dirk. Uh, thank you very much, Rachel. Can, can you hear me? Can I just make a sound check here? Can you? Yeah, okay, I see you nodding. Great. Good. Well, first of all, thank you so much for, for this final webinar. I, yeah, I hesitate to, to use the word final because I think, uh, you know, there, there is so much to do on this front and yet you have done so much in this year. Obviously, this is a bit of a premature um, closure, I suppose, because of, of you know, us and uh, the, the funding situation that we're all in. Um, and uh, but I, on behalf of, of the FCDO, my colleagues and the health research team, I think I do want to express here um, how important this program has been to us. Um, the funding situation is one that we that we face in all programs. Um, the the countdown program has had enormous achievements and impact, and I had the great pleasure to attend the ASDMH. Um, as well as the core NTD conference uh, before COVID uh, in, in Washington National Harbor. And uh, I think it was quite striking on how many uh, presentations, occasions, uh, members of, of the countdown team were actually present and, and uh, presented. And I think, you know, this just shows a little bit the impact uh, that you've been having over those years and um, the, the incredible importance that NTD play. Um, unfortunately, of course, you know, in 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 our um, uh, in our country uh, for overseas aid, the um, uh, many of the uh, reductions of funding have also impacted heavily on on the NTDs. Um, but I think we all realize how much uh, you know has been achieved, but also how much this has impacted on us. We um, feel are increasingly important. Um, such as global health security, where we feel that, you know, the, um, the topics that you've been looking at in, in terms of implementation research, in terms of, you know, integrating the communities, in terms of actually making sure um, that NTD programs, MDAs and so on can actually be successful has benefited us hugely, of course, um, in, in those critical times that we face ourselves in now in, in, um, in, co in the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and I believe that, you know, the, the lessons learned from Countdown, as well as from our other programs on NTDs, will, will serve us well, not just in the NTD space, but also beyond in health systems building, um, in fighting for infectious diseases, epidemics and pandemics equally. So 
um, it's with huge gratitude, Rachel and and uh, especially all the partners overseas as well in all the partner countries that I would like to say a huge thank you. Well done and and with so much impact shown. Um, so I, on behalf of the FCDO, a huge thank you. Um, also, regards from from Shirley Addis, who's been looking after this program from our end uh, for so many years, and who unfortunately cannot join us today, um, but who who is already looking forward to to seeing the recording. And yeah, and my huge thanks to all the partners in country as well. Um, I'll, I'll be with you for, for the next 45 minutes. Unfortunately, I have to dial out into another session afterwards, um, but we'll be in, in contact beyond that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dirk. It's very good to hear from you um, and appreciate you joining us and giving us the time today. Um, so to kick off the presentations, we're going to ask Anthony Beatty, who's the National Schisto and Soil Transmitted Helmets Coordinator in the Ministry of Health Liberia as well as our FGS Liberia research lead, and Akinola Olawole, who is our uh, research officer in Ogun, um, and he is the FGS lead there. So over to you, Akin and Anthony. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Anthony Kekula Betty. I will be presented along with Akinola on the FGS study, strengthening the health system for management of female genetic sosomiasis at the primary care level in Liberia and Nigeria. Next slide, please. So before we move forward, we female genetic sosomiasis is a condition that occurs when the female genetic tissues become affected by airs of cystosome. And most of the common symptoms seen are discharge, pain, bleeding during sexual intercourse, vagina uh, itching, burning, which may lead to soft fatalities and cause anemia, and also leads to miscarrier and increased risk of infection of women. Information on FGS at our level was very uh, limited, was not available for the identifications and management of FGS at health facilities. So the NTD program thought it was to develop a health system approach what, to identify and treat FGS cases at health facility level. Experiences of living with the conditions, these are some quotes that we got from women that was uh, interviewed. Um, one of the, one, the most one I like is uh, this quote from Bon County. Sometimes when my boyfriend get ready, he say, you woman that can burn their child, I will not be using myself for nothing and I cannot get benefit from out of you. So I asking you to please help me to treat me for this sickness. So it was a quote from one of the patients from Bond County I was interviewed. And then another quote also from, from Ogun's case. Next slide, please. So the objective of this study was to develop and test an integrated package of care for the identification and management of female genital cystosomiasis in highly endemic area for cystosomiasis in Liberia and Nigeria. And uh, number one objective was to improve the understanding of policy maker and her worker on FGS through awareness and training and to collaboratively develop and test an algorithms and training package for clinical management of FGS at health facility level. To support and train health worker to manage cases through the provision of treatment package at health facility level, including process contest and counseling for women who have fear of the drugs, and also, FGS have been actually misdiagnosed as sexually transmitted infection by most health workers. So, and uh, the last one was to evaluate the impact of the interventions on persons who have used the care package and the experiences of health worker FGS diagnosis tools and guidelines and referral system in the health system. Next, please. 
So the study used the qualitative improvement software implementation framework. So plan, do, studies, and act. So at the planning stage, we did we had a participatory method that was used in a co-design of integrated primary healthcare package that was developed and actions and training plans. After that, we conducted a training of health workers to implement the guidelines and algorithms at health facility level. And the supported supervision was also carried out by the qualitative improvement team. After that, we evaluated the intervention process and account and interview patients, health workers, and the, which were done by the QR team. And then we now then integrated the lesson learned throughout and advocated for the implementations of FGS within the health system. Next slide, please. So the road out. First, we identified the problem as FDS, and later we got a post study team to work. And then we did a literature review of existing documents, uh, document, and then the health system stakeholder. So in that we, that was applied in Liberia and Nigeria, and also the study of zero MOS document and existing algorithm to see how FDS can be can remain within the MOS practice and values. So we also review clinical register at clinic level to look at the diagnosis of cystosomiasis in women and the record of cases with symptoms that would lead to, uh, that would be associated with FDS. And then after that, we did a stakeholder mapping to identify participants to be engaged within the studies. So through that, we had three learning sessions, learning session one, learning session two, and three, uh, supporting supervision and guardian was also done through meetings, phone calls, uh, site visit, and then potentially solution for skill up was generated. So at this point, I would like to turn over to my colleagues from Nigeria, Akinola, to continue the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. My name is Akinola Wale. I work with Site Savers on the Kandam project. Next slide, please. So I'll be talking in details in what we did at the different learning session. At the learning session one, we increased awareness about FGS among the health workers and health professionals. And together we developed a diagnostic and treatment algorithm for FGS. We established a supervisory team among the QI quality improvement team. And we encouraged them to implement these throughout the two cycles. So at the first cycle, we selected health workers and we trained them on FGS. We used the pre and post training knowledge assessment to assess their level of understanding. And we asked them to go implement this at their respective health facility. And they were supported by the improving, improvement supervision team. Then at the learning session two, we engaged the QI team again and make amendments on the algorithm and intervention materials based on the findings from the field. Then we went to the uh, Q, Circle two, where we trained another set of uh, health workers. We also interviewed them after about implementation for about like one month. We interviewed the health workers, we interviewed the patient to understand the experiences and how the tool has been well implemented. Then we also interviewed the QI team to understand, to, in order to understand the process, uh, the process of the intervention. So at the learning session three, we further document learning and evaluation and supervision. And we finally adapted the integrated package and we developed a strategy to plan for scale up within the health system. Next slide, please. So we have three levels of training. We have the ship trainers. We have, for example, we have the consultant gynecologists and consultant physicians. And who, the ship trainers train the trainer. The trainer are health workers within the Ministry of Health. And the trainers now train, cascaded the training down to the implementers who are frontline health workers working at the health facility. This is a statement from one of the frontline health facilities who participated in training. What I enjoyed the most was the participative manner of the training. The fact that everyone was al al allowed to express themselves. Also the fact that we were asked questions and to write down answers and we got to, the, to know how we performed almost instantly. That display, we used to do helped us to know we made a mistake immediately. For instance, the sitting arrangement, 
I still remember some of the mistakes some of us made and how we were corrected, it stuck to me. That, that was a statement from the health worker because the training were actually participatory in nature. So we have the supervision and evaluation. We have several tools that we use for supervision and evaluation. For the on-site supervision, we have the supervisory checklist, which is administered on-site. Then we have the supervision. We also review the register, which the um, health workers are using to capture the data, to understand how well the data is being captured and if there's any issues, they were corrected. There was also weekly phone calls, like which has been mentioned, just to understand how the implementation is going and if there was any challenge and they were quickly ad addressed. Then we did interviews, like we've mentioned, with the health workers, also with the patient and the QI team, for, so for us to understand the process and outcome evaluation. Next slide, please. So these are the results on, the, on this right side of mine, we have that of the Nigerian, 79 persons actually uh, were seeking treatment based on their, their symptoms related to FGS. And 66 of them actually were treated with symptoms resolved within three to five days. We have 12 persons who could not be treated with Pascantel because of the, they are pregnant or they are breastfeeding mothers. One person declined treatment, even though he has the symptoms because of experience with um, using Pascantel. And one person was also referred because of the conditions. Then we have three persons who were co-infected with other um, gynecology group or um, STIs. Then for the um, Liberia county, we have two counties that actually where the uh, implementation was done, Bonn and Nimba, and they have three health facilities per each of these country. For, for Bonn, we have 158 persons who were treated. And for NIMBA, we have 106. So we have a total of 261. However, there were 245 persons that actually came for uh, treatment, but 16 out of them were, were not treated because they were pregnant. Next slide. So what, what, is, what are the actions that we have been able to come up with based on this um, intervention? First, FGS is being integrated into the HMIS of the Ministry of Health. Then there's a lot of collaboration where we have this health system be strengthened. There's integration with other healthcare programs for young girls and women. Then one interesting thing is that there's a change behavior of health workers based on the training, particularly on how to relate with patients. There are a lot of testimony from the patient saying that they would like to start using the government hospital because of the way they were treated. Also, we saw that there was increased knowledge and capacity for frontline health workers to be able to manage cases of FGS among young girls and women at the primary care level. We have also been able to establish a referral system, which is now in place for FGS at all levels of their system. Then there's reduced stigma of young girls and women affected by FGS. This was not the case before, but after the implementation, this, uh, there's, this issue of stigmatization has reduced. Then we have also seen reduction in inequality in access to healthcare and treatment for girls and women who are affected by FGS and with or other gynecological symptoms. And lastly, we also have that there's not available evidence for policy making on the issue of how to manage FGS among girls and women. These are all very key findings we have been able to bring on board based on the study. Next slide. I'd like to thank all our partners who have supported us to bring to this the states where the the implementation was done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ethan and Anthony, for a very clear presentation. Sorry, thank you for a very clear presentation. It was really great to see how the FGS project has uh, developed and grown in the two countries. Uh, we've had a question from the chat from Abdenego in Liberia, who was asking around. Um, what lessons have you learned from community engagement? And have you learned this from other projects that have been applied to this? And how did it, um, how have you managed, what lessons have you learned from community engagement? Thank you. That can be both to Anthony or Akin, whoever feels they want to respond. Okay. 
Sarah, could you please repeat the question? So do you want to just describe a little bit more about how within the FGS project you um, engage with the community? Yes, there was a community engagement uh, at the community level because we we work through the health facilities and then we have community meetings. Uh, so the community health volunteers and the community health assistant, Ukraine the traditional may wife was also involved. So the community leader was involved or uh, informed that we're going to use this community health worker and traditional male wives to actually search for the cases. So through that, we engage the community. Thank you. Um, I've, we've had a couple of questions that have asked about how you've linked with reproductive health services and in particular with um, the HIV uh, departments in your countries. So during the learning section, we included the National AIDS Control Program, the Family Health Division, and other departments within the Ministry of Health that were involved in the development of the intervention package. So even planning minister, uh, the planning department, so they were actually involved from the beginning of the process. Akin, do you want to talk from Nigeria? Yes, same here. At the initial um, engagement meeting, we invited all stakeholders who are involved in reproductive health or any sexual related, for example, the primary health care board, even those that are involved in scanners, maybe that do screening for women at the state level, at the um, state hospital board, and also at federal hospitals and at the ministry level. Thank you. We've got time for just one question, which I'm going to keep very quick. I'm sorry for this. Um, it was a question about was Prasequantal available at cost or no cost and how, um, were there any challenges in uh, obtaining the medicine? And I'm smiling because I know it was not straightforward. <laughs> so to, to start, uh, Prasequantal was an issue from the beginning because the, the one we have in country was about to expire. So we, Wrote WHO to assist us with the content, as you saw in the picture, it was a donation from WHO to the health facility to continue the, uh, the work, the research work. But then MDA is on, my drug administration is ongoing annually. So we also ha have process content in some of those health facilities that they can continue to use. So for Nigeria, particularly in Augusta, where we did the study, before we started the real implementation, because we envisaged this earlier, so we are beginning to talk with the ministry, but the FMOH were involved also in the intervention at the start. So we, we discussed how do we get Parasguantel available at the health facility, and we were able to get that. So during the, um, when they are to request for drugs, we, they were asked to make some additional for the health facilities during the request for drugs from the state to the FMOH. And so we, so the state were able to make additional requests for those health facilities where the implementation was going, was done. Also, because of FGS, FGS um, the ministry started discussing how they would ensure that the Pasquantel are available, especially in places where the prevalence is above 50 now. So going forward, when request is being made, this will have to be put in place. They have to consider places where FGS is actually endemic or where Shishimiya 6 is highly endemic, actually above 50%. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm sorry that we're not able to get to everybody's questions. We do have a lot of the resources and the tools on the Countdown website, and we'll put the details of that in the chat. And obviously, we can try and answer um, more direct questions if you would like to get in touch with us. So apologies, but we will run out of time. Um, OK, so thank you so much, Anthony and Akin. Um, I'd now like to um, welcome Lorette La, who's the research manager based at the Site Savers office in Kaduna. And she's going to talk about the work that she's been uh, supporting on case detection. Hello, everybody. I am presenting on behalf of the team the study we conducted on development of an integrated training package for community based case detection and referral for neglected tropical diseases 
NTDs affecting the skin. A pilot study that we conducted in Kaduna and Ogun State, Nigeria. The main aim of our study reflects um, the study title and it's basically for us to develop a context-specific integrated community-based case detection, referral and clinical diagnosis for NTDs across the two states. Most people affected by skin NTDs present late to the health facilities. By the time they get there, complications would have set in. In Nigeria, Buruli ulcer, BU, leprosy, lymphedema, and hydrocil are four skin NTDs that are being prioritized for integrated case management across diseases and within the health system. We anticipate that the findings from our study will support the Federal Ministry of Health, the FMOH here in Nigeria, to deliver their operational plan for the integrated case management of NTDs. Our study took a four-phased approach, where in phase one, we looked at the existing literature and conducted stakeholder meetings to find out what was existing and what we could potentially leverage on. We then collaboratively planned in phase two with all stakeholders and most importantly, including affected persons. The implemented training package was rolled out uh, over two months across both states. And then we used the Kirkpatrick training evaluation framework to evaluate our findings. This I will discuss on more as I progress in the presentation. Now, this is our stakeholder meeting. We're using the existing patient care pathway. We looked at um, structures that are existing within the community and potential structures that we could leverage on. Now, this is our beautiful booklet that we produced on the findings from the literature. In our action planning meetings, we had a working group uh, including key stakeholders at all the levels that I had mentioned. And we also conducted a series of review meetings across both states throughout the intervention development period to review and to validate the intervention manual and tools. Now, I'm very pleased to present to you our integrated training manual, which consists of three modules. In module one, we have an overview of the skin NTDs, and in module two, details of our cascaded training, which I will touch on a little as I progress in this presentation, and in module three, how to monitor and supervise our collaboratively developed integrated training package. Now, looking closer at some of the details of this, our package, we have the job aids where they're pictorials and highlights of how our community health workers, our frontline uh, health facility staff can identify these skin neglected tropical diseases. The next um, document in the middle, I particularly like because of the figure there, which we term the gingerbread man in the team where community healthcare workers can um, identify cases and then tick the boxes appropriately where they see the different lesions on this gingerbread man. The figure on the right is our integrated community register, where when we identify these uh, affected persons, they can be registered uh, appropriately and properly documented before they are referred. Now, how did we pilot our intervention? Recall that I mentioned our training cascade. Now, this is it, where uh, implementers at the federal level trained those at the state and LGA level using our collaboratively developed integrated training package. And they, in turn, that were trainees, now trained the frontline health facility staff at the primary health care level. These trainees at the PHC now became trainers as they trained the community health care workers at the community level. So this is the Kirkpatrick framework that we evaluated 
our findings using. In terms of the reaction to our training, we conducted post-training evaluations and we uh, used the participant's observation grid to find out the behavior and the environment, among others, that we conducted our training in. In terms of the learning, we conducted focus group discussions, FGDs, pre and post tests with our participants. Uh, to assess how our participants retained the knowledge and the skill that they gained from the training, post-intervention narrative case reports were conducted at six weeks in addition to the FGDs. We also uh, conducted pre and post knowledge tests and post training tests again at six weeks to assess the results of our training. From the results of our study, participants' knowledge of the skin NTDs improved over time. Across both states, 98% of our participants reported that they are more confident now and in the future to interact with patients on topics of managing NTDs. All of them mentioned that this will assist them in their everyday activities. Additional findings in terms of reactions of our participants showed that the training was highly effective and of good quality. They mentioned that the materials were easy to understand, most especially the pictorial uh, materials that made the learning more effective. Sustainability was key to our findings and the participants appreciated the inclusion of role plays within the training. The quotes to our right further support these findings. Now, the frontline health facilities staff described utilizing the diagnostic flowcharts and the job aids to implement new diagnostic tests, such as the trans elimination test, where the frontline health facility staff can differentiate swellings associated with hydrocils from other swellings in the groin and the scrotal area. The training su supported our community health workers to challenge stigma in the communities. Participants also um, described the training as uh, providing more gender sensitive care for them. They were able to attend to their patients with more empathy. Please permit me to read one of the quotes on the right to support these findings. We as women meet such people. We interact with their wife and let them know that their confidentiality is assured. We tell them to encourage their husbands to come and meet privately or to come to the facility to meet with the in charge or whom we refer to here as the facility head. With that assurance that their confidentiality will be maintained. Now, what then is the impact of our study? We can see the awareness at the community level on the identification and referral of skin NTDs has um, improved and the correction of stigma and misconception. Learning and knowledge has been gained through the training and the tools were found to enhance the knowledge and skills of health workers over time. They are better equipped to identify these four skin NTDs that we concentrated on in this study. The health cadres across all levels of the health system reacted positively to the tools, particularly in terms of the role plays and the use of practical examples within the delivery of the training. Practical demonstrations were, however, um, said to be beneficial by our participants. However, there's no study that doesn't have some gaps or some challenges. So one of the key suggestions that our participants made was the inclusion of patient experts in our trainings would be invaluable. Finally, to our key messages, we can see how collaboration has enhanced the development of this package 
how stakeholders are now more enthusiastic to scale this up to other areas within their states and how this participatory approach has re resulted in the ownership of the intervention. Now the states are saying that they would include this in their state-specific NTD work plans. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Lorette. Another fantastic um, presentation. I'm very pleased to see some questions uh, coming through on the chat. We'll take this small group of uh, presentations and then come back to the presenters to answer those. So next up, we have Tosin, who's a research analyst um, based in Sightsavers, Nigeria, who's led on the wellbeing study. Over to you, Tosin. Thank you. Thank you very much and um, good day, everyone. Uh, I'll be presenting establishing a community-based support system to improve health and well-being of people affected by stigmatizing skin neglected tropical diseases in Kaduna and Kwara states. Next slide, please. Okay, so why did we, what did we aim to do with this study? And the aim basically was to establish a community-based support system to improve health and well-being of people affected by stigmatizing neglected tropical diseases. And this was based on the fact that um, over the past few years, impacts of chronic impairment and disability results from NTDs uh, and other associated negative uh, implications on mental health. This has gained increasing recognition, but there is still significant lack of research that focuses on holistic health. Next slide. This study was carried out um, based, sitting really on the community-based participatory research approach. And this approach was used to design an intervention in collaboration with people um, affected by stigmatizing NTDs. And the study was split into four phases. Uh, phase one was a scoping review of existing literature together with photo voice, you know, by participants, photographs by participants, and then phase two, was a collaboration action plan to develop community um, support group intervention. And then phase three was to roll out and um, implement the newly designed community-based support groups in selected areas. And then phase four was um, a process and outcome evaluation using photo voice, qualitative analysis and participant observation. Next slide. So in the phase one, we have results from the photo voice of participants, people living with um, stigmatizing skin NTDs, and we have them speaking primarily around physical functioning and pain. And they described how as a result of the disease and the resultant pain that goes with it, this had affected their physical functioning. Quite a number of people reported also impact on livelihood, having to sell things that they had um, in order to take care of themselves and um, therefore had no more livelihood by the time this study was taking place. Other areas that they discussed were quality of healthcare, stigma, relationships, and promoting good health. And to my right there, you see the skin stories from both Kaduna and Kwara State that is the photo voice booklet that is also available on the countdown um, links. Next slide. Okay, so after that, we move to phase two where we have the dissemination and intervention planning meetings. And this is where the people affected um, came together with implementers at state and LGA level to talk about their photos, to talk about their experience through their photos, leading up to phase three, where we have the implementation of the support groups that had been designed at phase two following the dissemination um, or the photo exhibition um, meetings. And here, the support groups in phase three held at district and community levels with co-researchers acting as support group leaders. And it focused on group health, wound care, psychosocial support, and vocational training. We have a support group guide that was developed as a result of this, and that's also on the Countdown website. Then we move to phase four, and that's evaluation of the impact of support groups on the program and the people affected. Next slide. Please. 
Okay, so the impact on support group members, and one of the impacts is social connection and stigma reduction. Because of the support groups, um, members, people affected by skin NTDs, this led to a sense of belonging, building relationships and strengthening social connection. Also, we had improved self-esteem and reduction in internalized stigma. The, as a result of the support groups, people were now more outgoing. People were now encouraging themselves to not keep to themselves, but to mingle more within, within the community and take part in more activities. Next slide. Also, we see other impacts such as capacity building and independence. Co-researchers report being strengthened in their skills. They report also a sense of ownership and independence. Uh, capacities were built through use of cameras, learning to use cameras, increase in health knowledge, vocational skills and leadership. Being more accepted also in the community, getting more support from religious and community leaders were also things that helped boost capacity and independence. Also, uh, respondents, participants report improved health knowledge and health outcomes. They felt better, you know, because of things that they had learned within the support groups. Next slide. Now we have the impact on the program and program people, program staff from both state and local government um, talked about the awareness of the support groups that led to more affected persons coming out, you know, instead of hiding within the community. And by as a result of their coming out, this helped to improve also the, the uh, case finding uh, methods that were in these LGAs as case filing, you know, improved. People joined the support groups, uh, new people were identified on a weekly basis and monthly reports also had improved. Also, we saw that growth and increase in membership within the support group increased phenomenally every time the support group met, which meant new people were being added to the group. And ownership of the group was based on the fact that first it was being run by the people affected themselves. Also, they had raised funds through membership fees and then um, they were generating income from vocational training, such as soap making. Next slide. Next slide, okay. So what are the key messages that we're taking away from this study? First and very important is working in partnership with persons affected, caregivers and program implementers to co-design and implement community-led support groups can positively impact physical and mental well-being as we have seen in the study. Also, support groups have had positive impact on members through strengthening relationships, networking, finding mutual support, as well as gaining skills in health knowledge, wound care, as well as skills acqu acquisition. The ownership of groups by persons affected is a foundation for supporting the groups as they set their own priorities, they have their own funds, they manage the funds themselves, and, uh, and these funds had been raised not from outside, but by membership fees. Then the support and strong collaboration of community leaders, as well as LGA staff, are instrumental in sustaining the groups, as well as for advocacy in promoting the group to other people who may want to join. Also, the learnings from these support groups can inform the establishment of similar community-led support networks in other settings. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Tosin, for that fantastic presentation. Um, we're just going to have the last one in, in this little small package, which is from Anthony Beatty, uh, the Shisto manager in um, the Ministry of Health in Liberia, who's going to talk about the development of the communication strategy. Thank you very much, uh, Richard. 
So we want to talk about the development of the communication strategy in Liberia using implementation research funding to inform policy, learning from the cross departmental development of communication strategy for neglected tropical diseases in Liberia. Next slide, please. So the development of the communication strategy came about from the funding, the funding from the research uh, countdown implementation research where there was a weakness in social mobilization process and lack of awareness in communities. And then what happened is program implementer felt that there was a need to develop a comprehensive evidence if, to inform communication strategy that will increase the knowledge of different communities group in the various NTDs that has been implemented in Liberia. So the NTD program in collaboration with the National Health Promotion Unit otherwise to work along with partners and the Ministry of Health Department to develop the communication strategies. Next slide, please. So the communication strategy linking research funding to the strategy to ensure access and adaptability of awareness of activities. So the strategy look at awareness that awareness should not be limited to during campaign period but there should be a focus on providing ongoing awareness about each of the diseases that the program is trying to target. And then uh, there should be also be ongoing awareness about medicine being distributed, what are they, what they do, and who they are targeting to take, uh, for the medicine to be administered to. So also we target the community leaders we have to, uh, the uh, community engagement or the target of community leaders. Communication messages should respond to traditional belief about the causes of the disease. And people seem to have some awareness about the link between the disease and the environment. And they should be emphasized in communication messaging to support community to keep the environment clean. Next slide, please. So we develop IC, IC techniques such as radio, jingles, poster, flyers, etc. That could be uh, <coughs> investigator. Then interpersonal communication skill through mul multiple channels would be critical to reach both men and women with health messaging. The awareness activity should take place at different level or different time of the day to allow for the timing of different livelihood activities to take place. Also, a variety of awareness techniques that include workshop, face-to-face -face, uh, discussion, radio campaigns, posters, will be essential to ensure all community members are reached during campaign or MDA implementations. Superv supervisions of awareness activities should focus on ensuring all sections of the community are reached during campaign. And to ensure women are reached in awareness activities, messaging sex uh, should be delivered in local dialects and or simple English matters should be adapted to reach people living with disability. So the message needs to be simple that people will understand and will reach people that have disability. Next slide. What were the purpose of the communication strategy? One of the purpose was to increase awareness and acceptance among community dwellers on targeted entities and the associated intervention. That's like case management and mass drug administration. And to also increase the knowledge of health worker, community health assistant, community health volunteers, or community health, community drug distributor and community dwellers in relation to endemic entities in Liberia, which to tailor to communicate, 
communications, messages, and approaches to cultural, religious, regional, and gender differences within our society. Make use of traditional communication techniques, existing local knowledge and structure, and then we should be able to raise the profile of the NTD program within the government of Liberia to ensure ownership and sustainability of the program. Next slide, please. So there were various steps that we took in the development of the communication strategy. And one of the first steps was the dissemination of research funding to NTD program and health promotion division from Countdown. And then we, we organized meetings between entities and health promotions to develop activity plan and budget for the development of the strategy. Then after that, step three was the technical working group was established to agree on the strategic framework of the strategy. Then refinements of the strategy among quoting and circulations was done to partners and collaborators for comments. Final meeting to agree document text and finalize creative brief for the strategy was also done. And then it was sent for val validations in accordance with the Ministry of Health Protocols and Procedures. Next, please. So there was some reflection on the collaboration. There was underlying social and political factors and funding allocation that shaped the ease of the collaboration. And then merchants of multi-sectoral expertise present a unique space for the development of the appropriate messaging. So we collaborated with international partner and local partner in the various department within the Ministry of Health to come up with the communication strategy. So individuals and group reflection on the process also contributed to the strengthening features and collaborations. There was meeting and collaboration length needed to be sufficiently, sufficiently time to maintain focus. So we needed more time to work together to come up with a good document. Supporting integrations of NTD program activities at the national and community level, and then realistic time expectations and sustained engagement of all actors in the development and rollout of the policy is was critical to its success of the development of the communication strategy. So they were working group, working together as MOA department to increase cross specialities, understanding through shared learning, we call the video into new mechanisms of governance that support in addressing health challenges within the NTD program and the Ministry of Health. It enables us to increase in community awareness and understanding of NTD collaboration, which led to NTD being prioritized in other areas of the health system and contributing to system strengthening and sustainability of activity within NTD program. Next, please. Thank you. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you, Anthony. I think it's great to hear about something where you managed to work cross-departmentally to get that strategy developed. It was a huge uh, achievement, so well done. And we've had quite a few questions through. I think one um, was actually to me um, from Dirk Muller, um, who's left, but he may hear it, which was how can lessons learned in these countries be transferred to other countries? Um, and I think Dirk and others, this has really been through the way that the researchers um, from all the different countries have been part of the network, such as the i network. For FGS, we've been part of the Genital Schisto network. Um, we've spoken to the other projects that are, the other groups such as SCI and um, the FAST package so that we can really share, share the learnings on FGS. Um, for the skin diseases, there's been a lot of interaction with the NNN and other groups um, such as the Redress Project, where they're working on these topics to really try and share learnings and get the findings out as far as possible. So I hope that answers your question. Lorette, there was a question for you and possibly to uh, Tosin as well, um, which was, 
Were there any other plans to bring other skin diseases such as yours, scabies and onco into the integrated package? Thank you very much for that question. Um, I know that we prioritized the four skin entities that we mentioned for our pilot study. This is actually just a pilot, but I'm sure that the key learnings from this study can also be applied to other um, skin entities. And I'm almost optimistic to say that um, I'm sure that as the states begin to think about scaling this up, I'm sure that would be a priority area to look for. And I believe it to be a very good area to concentrate on for future research. Thank you. Yes, and um, just to quickly add to that, um, I, I think one thing that came up from the support groups is that the fact that um, people in the communities realized that um, groups of people were meeting, um, other people were coming out that had various kinds of um, um, illnesses to say, uh, to engage with the programs, the various programs, um, one thing that was clear was that by the time we're going into Kaduna State, there was report of um, no really ulcer in Kaduna State. But by the time the study began, people began to come out. And then this led to engagement with the program. This led to, you know, proper diagnosis, proper testing, you know. Uh, so that, that improved sort of case findings. And I, I think, I believe that um, these support groups will go a long way to also help, you know, the integration of these other um, diseases. Thank you. Thank you, Tosin. Um, and Lorette, there was another question um, for you, which was around how can detection and management of NTDs be integrated into other health programs, such as primary care programs? Okay, um, is possible because we actually concentrated our pilot training on healthcare workers at the primary level. So I believe this is something that um, can be integrated into other primary healthcare activities, especially from the cascaded training that we conducted, findings that we got. So the methods are there and it can be replicated. Thank you. Thank you. And um, do you have any data on the number of cases that have been detected? Okay, we actually had a baseline data on the cases before we commenced the study. Now that is actively ongoing and within the state that we piloted our intervention in. They're currently collating and uh, collecting and collating this baseline, this data post the intervention period. So it's an ongoing thing. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, and so we're going to now move on. So thank you to presenters for this uh, package of presentations. Um, and to move on, we're going to first of all hear from Georgina Zawale, who is a uh, social scientist based at ULPA in Liberia. Thank you, Georgina. Hi everyone, I will be presenting on participatory planning for equity in MDA, community advocate for meaningful partnership, communication, engagement of those left behind. Next slide. So as part of our implementation research in Liberia, we were able to identify health system bottlenecks faced by the NTD programs. Those bottlenecks that were identified we decided to use innovative visual methods to help explore possible interventions and ideas that could address the health system challenges that are currently limiting the entity delivery in Liberia. So we use the innovative visual method to communicate our research findings to different audiences at different levels of the health system. And based on that method, we're able to support the development of solutions of existing challenges and to redress existing power imbalances in health service design. Next slide. So in order to do that, we had to engage a local artist and then we described our findings to him 
we identify those challenges and ask him to put them into Victoria. And then those pictures were taken to the community, the county for validation. We display those pictures in the community and ask them to tell us what they think about this picture and what could be a possible solution to those pictures. At the national level, we use the problem tree to articulate challenges identified from original data that was taken from the community and the county to see that how they can present causes and solutions to identify that was identified from in the community at the stakeholder, the stakeholder level. So these are pictures that we use in the community level, and this picture below looked at seasonality within Liberia. One of the quotes here is that one of our participants telling us that he's not already, he's not always in the urban area, but most time travel to the village. And sometimes when things, when MDA is happening, he's not around. Next slide, please. So this is a picture that depicts awareness. So we took this picture into the community. We showed the different ways in which they told us that awareness was done. And then we asked them, can you tell us what you see in this picture? So when they look at this picture, they were able to describe the different ways in which awareness was done. And then they gave us recommendations to be able to address gap in communication delivery. So some of the solutions that they came up with, they said, health clubs in schools and communities should be established to continue awareness processes. We should involve community members and community health team to provide awareness. And then doing the awareness, we should also be innovative by using drama as strategic area like marketplaces. So using these innovative methods, they also suggested that people that are affected by NTD could serve as advocates doing awareness. So, so these are some of the innovation that they came up with. Next slide. Next slide, please. So this is a picture around disease knowledge. So this picture is like, they say that they think that these diseases are some form of African sign or witchcraft. So we took these pictures and then we asked them to tell us what they see in the picture and then what they think we can do to address this gap. And then they say that continuous awareness outside of camp campaign period will help to inform people more about this disease condition and to tell them about the reality of this condition and then increase the timing given for disease awareness. So instead of just conducting awareness prior to MDA, there should be periodic period where you can have these awareness activities continuing so that people can be more educated about this disease condition. So for some of the solutions that came from the community, men suggested that completing awareness and distribution of drugs should, be, should happen during the weekend. And then they also suggested that more people who access MDA during the rainy season as they will be at home. So this other picture here is picture around accessibility where we look at the rainy season and the dry season. And then we ask them for their preferred timing for MDA. So this picture shows that most people, according to them, are missed during the uh, dry season because they often go on their farm to carry on their farming activity. So they prefer that distribution should be done at least during the rainy season where you have more people at home so that we can leave no one behind. Next slide, please. So looking at the availability of drugs, during our research, we noticed that there were two different methods used for distribution. So this first picture shows that people going to a fixed point to receive their medication. And the second picture shows that people receive medication at home. That was the house to house distribution. So during our validation, they were able to tell us that yes, it is good to have people receiving medication using this both method, but they prefer the house to house method too that we ensure that people who are, who are old, who are disabled, who are unable to move to the fixed point can have access to these drugs. So looking at these two methods, they suggested that both methods can be used for host to host method is also important to ensure that people with disability are not left out. 
They also suggested that the remaining trucks doing the distribution should remain at the health facility where people who are not home at the particular time doing distribution can have access to those trucks when they are home. So trucks should be kept at the health facility for people who miss out. Next slide, please. So looking at our implementation research, we think that visual metal facilitated the engagement of persons affected by entities to serve as patient advocates. Using visual methods resonate at all levels of health system for knowledge transmission, moving from the community to the county and to the national level. It helps to flatten power hierarchy, enabling validation of resource, dialogue, and crea creation of solutions at different levels within the health system. We think that visual method is important in disseminating research and it helps to break that gap and help to address difficult situations that can inform policy development. Based on our implementation, we were able to generate solutions that led to community intervention design and delivery for supervision structure, as well as the establishment of community-based social mobilization team. Thank you. Next slide. Thank you so much for your listening. Thank you, for Georgina, for that very uh, visually entertaining and interesting uh, presentation. It's great to hear how the community responded to those findings and how you validated them. So continuing on the um, way of talking about participation and cooperation, we move now to Noella Guani, who's the uh, team lead for the Scale Up project based in Sight Savers, Nigeria. Thank you, Noella. Thank you. My name is Noel Agwani. So today I'm presenting on the scale up of a bottom of participatory planning approach for mass administration of medicines in Nigeria. This study was conducted in Kaduna and Ogun State. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so the aim of the study is to develop and evaluate a sustainable approach to scaling up and embedding evidence for participatory planning and then context-specific implementation of MAM, that is mass administration of medicines through the use of participatory planning guides and capacity strengthening of entity implementers. Secondly, to improve equity of mass administration of medicines and inform neglected tropical disease policy through an enhanced community engagement strategy. Next slide. So in this study, we used a multidisciplinary action research cycle to scale up the approach across the two states in Nigeria. Um, in phase one, we engaged entity implementers and other community stakeholders to gather information on implementation challenges and solutions. In phase two, we produced um, context-specific -speci action plan templates using implementation um, solutions to guide the state and also the local government districts teams to develop action plan for participatory planning and then implementation. So during our MAM planning, we use tools like action logs to observe and then document the implementation process. Then in phase four, we held um, review meetings to reflect on the implementation of action plans and its impact in MAM. And at the end of this phase, the participatory guide for planning was developed. In phase five, we rolled out the training guides across the two states and in all the local districts to scale up this participatory approach. And it was done via a paradigm shift training. Throughout these processes, we worked together with the federal and the state ministries of health. Next slide, please. So uh, a range of participatory um, engagement methods were used to engage with communities. Methods like um, transfer work, which is an interactive work in a community with different categories of community leaders to identify current or potential structures for MAM. Another interesting method we use is the community mapping, where different groups of community mm -hmm. members drew a map to identify structures that different groups interact within their community and the range of other participatory um, engagement methods. Next slide, please.
So we're able to evaluate the intervention using a range of methods. For example, we use an ethnography where we embedded ourselves in the community to observe the impact of the tools co-produced by Countdown on MAM. We also had um, committee feedback interviews and review meetings. Activity, we also had the activity-based costing, which was con conducted to quantify the cost of um, scaling up the participatory approach in different con contexts of the NTD program. Next slide, please. So here I present to you the intervention tools Countdown co-produced with program implementers. The first two by my left is the participatory guide for planning equitable mass administration of medicines. It has been developed with and also for entity implementers, for donors, non-governmental organizations, implementing partners, researchers, and other cross-sectoral partners. So this uh, is also known as the PGP in short. So this PGP was used to guide implementers across the two states on how to apply a participatory approach within their own context. And uh, the primary goal of this PGP is to help implementers take a more context specific, a bottom up and then inclusive approach, which will increase equity within MAM. It also provides information for building partnerships and um, collaborations with various stakeholders including who to involve, how to structure your meetings, all for effective planning. And this PGP comprises of four modules and also an annex. The next tool is the learning pack, um, which is loaded with recommendations and solutions from some of the committee engagement methods um, I've mentioned earlier. It also gives information on how best to conduct community and school-based distribution of medicines. Um, Counter have also produced two training videos. The first is the short video, which introduces and also summarizes the planning guide. The second video um, is a training video which features MAM process. It, it is to be used alongside the planning guide, so it provides implementers with a visual aid to participatory planning and implementation of MAM. And lastly, the costing tool. It, it um, outlines potential costs of different participatory activities that have been outlined in the participatory guide. The costing tool is uh, also produced to support implementers when they, uh, they are identifying new funding resources. Next slide, please. So this is a, a tool that Calendar has also produced, the standard operating procedures. So it is designed to provide steps to scaling up the PGP with the aim to improve equity in MAM in other new states. It contains evidences to support the steps, which is based on the outcome of the scale-up process that we have used here in Nigeria. So if you plan to scale up the participatory guide for planning in other states or to use it in other programs, you should serve as a guide with detailed steps just have the way we have used it in the two states. Next slide, please. So here we have outlined some of the results and findings from our study. Um, it created inclusive planning and implementation processes whereby uh, representatives of people with disability were involved for the first time in planning. There was also increase in community ownership. For example, with the involvement of community development committees, they donated aprons with MAM inscription on it to improve sensitization. Um, Context-specific planning that considers local realities has been introduced to the NTD community. For example, um, in an urban area, there was the introduction of the health worker ivermectin administration that improved acceptability of methods. And then other countries with similar interve intervention structure like Nigeria, can share these learnings and apply this research evidence also to their program. There are interesting quotes on the right from um, program implementers from both states, which you could read. Next slide, please. So we are also sharing with you the impact of Countdown's participatory approach at um, different levels. So at the community level, there was increase in advocacy and, in, and involvement of community leaders. For example, involvement of community leaders in sensitization led to community acceptance of medicines. 
and then involvement of other community groups that have been missed in the past. The impact for program implementers. Now the state and state entity teams are able to work together in teams. For example, they work together with other implementers at different levels to create action plans. We also observe an increase in facilitation skills in stakeholder meetings and also in training cascade to ensure that people participate. The implementers now conduct role plays during training for better understanding of um, training content. So for the, the impact for the program, there is overall increase of 35% reparty coverage for oncocercasis and lymphatic filariasis in the 2019 mass administration of medicines. There was also increased uh, resources for entity implementers at the local level. Next slide, please. Finally, here are some key messages from the study. Um, one is to, uh, to attain an equitable coverage for the NTD program requires engaging different layers of stakeholders in the program and across sectors. Countdown's outputs provide practical guide to support with the process. Um, the countdown tools support context-specific community driven solutions, thus are mainstreamed within local health systems. So NTD actors may consider applying them to their diverse program realities for effective outcomes. Committee advocacy is key in engaging with committee decision makers to encourage committee ownership, inclusiveness, and sustainability. Lastly, the NTD Pro planning and implementation comes with costs. So countdown evidence provides information support, which will benefit the program, the entity program, in terms of resource sourcing and sustainability of the bottom of approach. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Noella, a fantastic presentation that outlines the steps that you went through to really um, engage and encourage participation and the tools that were developed to facilitate that. So thank you. Uh, we've just got a few minutes for the chat. Um, one question, Noella, that coming to you, but I know it was answered uh, asked earlier as well, so apologies for that. But why were Kaduna and Ogun states prioritised? So Kaduna has um, been implementing for the past uh, over 15 years, and then Ogun is a uh, registered without um, funding partners. So Start Savers has been supporting the NTD program in Kaduna while Ogun um, had none. So uh, we use this to compare to see the challenges and all that from the two states. Thank you. Um, and then this is a question both for you and for Georgina. How did you engage with national policymakers and what ways could there be to inform national implementation plans? So Noelle, I'll come to you first and then to Georgina. Can you see again the question? How did you engage with um, national policymakers and what, um, have there been any opportunities to be able to um, input into the national Im uh, implementation plans? Okay, so during this uh, research, we involved the Federal Minister of Health and also the State Minister of Health. The State Minister of Health worked, worked, at, worked as co-researchers and also the Federal worked as the co-researcher also. So during all, all our activities, they were all part of these um, processes. And even in the pro um, production of the tools, we co-produced together with them. We were able to, to review um, the documents and also see how this document, the, the tools could be sustained. Thank you. Georgina? Okay, so from the initial stage of our implementation research, we started to engage the national level and they were the ones that came up with the questions and they were able to identify those bottlenecks that we needed to work along with them and then start our implementation research. 
So from the initial stage to the end of the implementation, we involve the national level, we involve the county, we involve the districts, we involve the communities. And even at the county level, we have the entity focal points that work along with us. And then they also serve as co-producer to join our research implementation. So it was an ongoing process and they were always involved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and then Georgina, there's been a question for you. When you were looking at messages to the community, did, did some of the, um, were some of those messages able to uh, incorporate NTDs into antenatal care visits, into primary care, at routine health centers? Um, whether the narrative to look at, could you bring NTD services into those areas? Did you look at antenatal care and primary health care? I think that was the basic of us going to the community and then coming up with these messages. That was the essence to make sure that it is integrated into the primary health care system. And it shouldn't not just be messages developed from the higher top so that you can inform the community and those messages that will be accepted, uh, yeah, that will be produced should be community driven and they should be part of the process so that they will understand those messages and will know that these messages were developed from them and not from us. So it's the essence and we have integrated them into the primary health care system. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, perfect answer. And I think one of the comments in the chat echoes that, that community engagement is the bedrock of successful implementation. So that's from a uh, health provider in the county level, isn't it, in Liberia? So thank you very much for that. Um, the question around, is there an access to these presentations? We can certainly share them afterwards and this uh, is all being recorded. So please let us know. We're now going to move to the panel discussion, which is being expertly chaired by the Site Savers Country Director for Nigeria, Sunday Ishiyoku, and he will introduce as part of the panel um, who's on. So there will be an opportunity at the end of the panel for people to ask the panel questions directly. So thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Um, and good afternoon, good morning, or evening, wherever you are in the world and welcome to the most exciting session, I will tell you, of this webinar. Um, it, is because, uh, it is exciting because it gives us the opportunity to hear from people who are at the front line, particularly our partners, government partners. Uh, we also have Kim from the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine, and then we also have uh, um, uh, James, who was also working on the project. Um, we have 40 minutes for this session, so do forgive me if I'm very strict with time, and uh, we will try as much as possible to answer as much questions as we can. Um, so I will ask each one some quest a question they would answer. If you have a question or a follow-up question, please do put it in the chat box and Kelly will try and uh, see that we get that question answered. If you are unable to answer your question at no, all, please do send us the questions to MYT and I'm sure we should be able to get back to you with a detailed response. Having said that, I'll now go ahead and uh, quickly ask our panelists to introduce themselves. Um, first, I just want you to tell us your name and to reflect on what has what you think has been the, the key success in relation to NTDs in the last seven years that you've been involved in the countdown uh, project. So I'll, I'll start with Kim. Kim? So share with us, uh, what do you think has been the key success in, in the past seven years and, and something that you think will reflect with you personally years after this project has ended? Okay, so I'm Kim Ozano. I'm from the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine. I'm a social scientist and I have a real passion for participatory research and the values attached to them. And I think for me, one of the, the main successes of, of Countdown that I've watched over the last four years is really observing NTD implementers kind of embracing research and learning research methods that they applied themselves in the field. And I think I remember hearing back from their experience of doing this and how it really helped the implementers connect with communities in a much stronger and more in-depth manner. And I think for me, that's, that's one of the key successes from all the projects. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Uh, Gati? Introduce yourself and tell us what stands out for you. Okay, thank you. I'm Gati Nalo 
from the countdown Liberia female supervisor on the FGS team. Well, from my experience working with Countdown over the past years, there were a lot of things that went on in Countdown. One key success is a female genital schistosomiasis study that was brought to Liberia through Countdown, which was piloted in Bonn and Lima counties. This condition was new and it was health worker first time hearing about it. So through the process of developing the female genital schistosomiasis manual trainings, Health worker gain a new knowledge. Now, there's accessibility of drugs for all patients diagnosed of female genital schistosomiasis, the pathway from the community to the clinic and the hospital. And now, female genital schistosomiasis has been integrated into the HMIS. So, for me, it is a major success. Thank you. Thank you, Gati. Um, I'll go to our own Hawa. So how I introduce yourself and tell us what you will, to you, you will never forget about this project. Is Hawa there? Yes, I'm there. Good afternoon. Okay. Good afternoon, my Hawa. Key, yes, my key success in, related, in relation to NTD. Oh, can you introduce yourself first, please? Let us know who you are and where you are. Okay. And your relation to the I'm, project. Uh, I'm Hawa Usman from Kaduna State as a core researcher and also the state NTD implementer. One key success in relation to NTD over the last seven years is the introduction of the new structures, which helps in reaching everyone in the community by not leaving anyone behind, e.g. the marginalized group, e.g. the marginalized group, people with disability, nomadic, who were missed during our previous implementation, as well as the provision of new document that will serve as a guide in NTD activity, e.g. the PGP, the PGP standard operative procedure, and also the learning pack, case detection, integration training manuals. So these are the new sources that we have developed in NTD over the seven years. Thank you, Hawa. Program. Thank you very much, Hawa. And please don't forget, if you have any question or anything, just put it in the chat box. I will go to Castle. Castle, what's what's uh, what for you has been the, the, the key success in the last seven years? So my name is Castle K. Cori. I'm the uh, program director so, for neglected tropical disease. Uh, MOH. Now, so this, the uh, if you, this, Please, can you put your mics on mute if you are not Castle? Thank you. Go ahead, Castle. Sorry for the interruption. So I'll just, no problem. So I'm, I'll just introduce myself as the program director for NTD's program, Minister of Health Liberia, and also country lead for the uh, countdown in Liberia. So there are several achievements and we don't have the time to name all of them or to discuss all. Uh, I think as we go along, we will discuss a couple of them. But more importantly for me are the, the fact that the findings from the research are being able to make a lot of policy change at the level of the neglected tropical disease. That's number one. Um, the countdown also will have uh, impacted the, the raising of the profile of the NTP program in Liberia. Clearly uh, build capacity especially in, in terms of the uh, research. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so basically, I would just like to name three as we go along, probably we we'll discuss in more detail, but those are key things that are very promising and, and we're lacking and probably in the Liberia NTDs program and through countdown, we're able to get uh, visibility on them. Thank you. Thank you, Kaso. Abenego? It's been a go online. We'd like to hear from you. Introduce yourself and tell us what the one key success you can remember from the project. Okay, let's let's go to uh, James. So James, please introduce yourself. Tell us one key success you would take away from this project. All right. Good afternoon. Greetings from Nigeria. My name is James Yanshi. I've been a um, social scientist on the Countdown project and. Um, I lead the scale-up study in one of the two states where the 
the PGP, which is a participatory guide for planning equitable mass administration of medicine, was rolled out and evaluated. Now, for me, the key, the key success for countdown um, as regards uh, its activities in Nigeria in the last seven weeks is that at the end of the day, we now have tools to support planning and implementation of MAM activities, which hitherto were not as practical as what we now have. Not just having these tools, we've gone ahead to build capacity of um, program implementers in both states to use these tools in order to increase uh, contact and therapeutic coverage for the end of the program. For me, it's a, it's, it's a serious gain, and I'll continue to reflect on this as part of the gains of the project in Nigeria. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, James. And, and for the benefit of those who are not from Nigeria, uh, most people are used to mass drug administration, which is MDA. In Nigeria, we have adopted the name Mass Administration of Medicines, which is MAM, yeah. and that's what James was referring to. Thank you very much, James. Um, so we now ask, uh, I think, I, I, I suspect you are sharing the, the same laptop with, uh, with Anthony. If I'm correct, if you can hear me, uh, then please uh, introduce yourself. Okay, do send, do, do leave a message on the chat box and, and we'll get back to you. Um, um, Kafil, I don't know whether you are there. Is Kafil around? Yes, I'm here. Oh, Kafil, your network is not really good. Okay, Kafu, can you can you just type on the, if you can hear me? I'm with you, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, so nice to have you with us, and so okay. nice to hear you finally. So please introduce yourself and tell us what key success that you will take away from this project. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. I am Kafil Emiola Mariam, the state deputy deputy coordinator for Neglected Tropical Disease Control Program in Ogun State, Nigeria. I'm also a member of the, um, one of the state's research assistants on countdown implementation, research implementation program. So, so far so good. One key success that I can mention in relation to NTDs over the last seven years, in fact, sincerely, there are a series of um, success stories to mention a few of them. In Ogun State, there has been increased awareness on all the six NTDs that is being focused in the state. And this has actually improved acceptability and uptake of NTD medicines in the state. And this is done with the um, support of countdown research implementation in the state. Also presently in Ogun State, FGS implementation in the state has been a pride for us. Health workers have been trained on uh, management and treatment of FGS in Ogun State. Our capacities have been developed. Also to mention the um, experience that we've gathered on skin entities in the state, the capacities of state implementers as well as local government implementers have been developed. Thank you, Kafi. Uh, thank you very much. For, thank you All very right. much. For, Yes, we appreciate it. I can see there are so many benefits that Ogun State has uh, gained from this project. Um, and I, I was in Ogun last, last week and I was really amazed with, uh, with how things have changed in the last uh, five years. Um, so last but not the least, uh, Gideon uh, Udwak. So Gideon, from, from a federal perspective, from a federal ministerial health perspective, is, is the key success that you will always remember from Countdown. Is Gideon with us? 
Okay, if Gideon is not available to, to, to introduce himself, we will just go ahead to the panel and uh, start with some questions. So Kim, I, I will start with you. Uh, I'm sure you've caught your breath by now. So how have research approaches or frameworks supported health systems strengthening within the NTD program? I think that's a really good question. Um, right at the beginning of all the pro projects, we spent some time thinking about which research frameworks are best suited for the aims and objectives of the projects, but would also serve to strengthen the health system more widely. And that's something we really wanted to embed across the projects. And, you know, the whole team spent some time thinking about this. How do we really meaningfully undertake research, implementation research in a co-production manner that is not tokenistic? And the, the frameworks you've heard about today, participatory action research was one, community-based participatory research, quality improvement are all frameworks that have quality principles attached to them that are around participation, inclusion, equity, and sustained change. And we really wanted to have a process that would help us stick to this and also to kind of challenge the power dynamics that can dominate health systems and exclude certain members or certain levels of the health system. So these frameworks help to centralize around bringing implementers closer to communities. And the way those frameworks kind of are positioned is to strengthen the capacity of all the levels of the health systems, but also of communities. So that communities are able to communicate their solutions, communicate their challenges in different ways, but to use research methods and tools that suited them individually and as groups as collective. And then, as you've already heard, the uh, NTD implementers also, you know, learned about research tools and they had uh, capacity strengthening that allowed them to connect with communities in the ways they hadn't before. And all of these frameworks, one of the most important things about them is they have embedded learning. So we didn't have this traditional approach where we had research, collection, analyze and then disseminate. Rather, we have this cyclical process of learning and action at every stage and we adapted and we learned together and we took action and we watched what happened and we learned again. So all of these tools weren't produced from nothing. They were produced from testing and learning and strengthening our capacity across the whole team. And those frameworks really presented options to do that. And the way we ensured that we kind of embedded quality within our programs as well is we had interviews and we had mechanisms to check. Are we really aligning to those principles for these research frameworks to make sure that the voices of the most marginalized are being heard and listened to and that they were being reflected in our uh, kind of documentation or policy advice or policy briefs and now um, all the products you've heard today. So I think that is why we have chose those frameworks and, and we really have seen some of the benefits of that. Thank you. In one word, transformation. Thank you very much, Kim, for giving us that, that insight. Um, I, I hear Abinago is, is with us now, but I'll just urge him to please hold on. When I get to his question, he'll have an opportunity to introduce himself and then go ahead and answer his questions. So my, my next question goes to Gachi. Gachi, you, you are from the implementation side of things. So can you share with us what we've learned from Countdown about equity and inclusion of persons affected by NTDs? How do you think this can support the NTD programs to sort of accelerate towards disease elimination targets? I got you on mute, Gati. Hello? Yes, we can hear you now. You want me to repeat the come, question? Can you come again? Yeah, with the question. Yes. So, so I, I said, as, as somebody who is on the front line in terms of implementation, what have you learned from the countdown project about equity and inclusion mm -hmm. of people affected by NTDs? But equity and inclusion of people affected by NTDs. And okay. while you are answering that, also think about how you think this can help to support the NTD programs towards acceleration and achieving the targets that we've set for elimination. Okay, thank you. When it comes to equity and inclusion of people affected by NTDs, Countdown have engaged all level of health system in their implementation processes. For example, uh, looking at the communication strategy, which was done with the community involvement of the community to validate fundings and provide possible solutions to address those challenges faced by the NTDs program. 
So this process took a bottom-top approach from the community to the county and national. Mm -hmm. Secondly, engaging people affected by MTDs, serving as a patient advocates and listening to their voices have shaped the MTDs intervention. Thank you very much. So how, how do you think this, this can help us to accelerate towards elimination of uh, getting to the targets of elimination of NTDs? Well, this can support the NTDs program by involving all levels in whatever implementation. For example, like the way we carry on the FGS or, or, or pilot, the female genital schistosomiasis pilot by involving the entire levels, people from national, county, district, health facility and the community. So for me, I think involving the entire level, we will be working to moving. It is a great success in moving forward. Thank you, Gati. And, and I'd like to remind our, our, our participants that please, if you do have any follow-up questions, just put it on the chat box. Kelly is going to pick them up and we'll return to them later on. Uh, I'll now move to James. Uh, uh, James, um, what tools and findings have counted and produced that could be useful as we talk about elimination now. What tools can be very, very useful uh, for to other NTD programs? And why do you think they will be useful? Well, um, thank you. From my conservative count, there are no less than 16 tools that have been produced by the different uh, studies we conducted here in Nigeria. And all of these tools are so strong for uh, the different purposes for which they were put together. Now I can um, start by mentioning uh, tools like the costing tool, which provides um, ideas around potential costs of running or implementing a MAM program. Then I can as well talk about um, the um, SOP, the Standard Operating Procedure, which is a tool that provides support to new states who may want to scale up the use of the participatory guide in their own state to improve mom coverage. And um, I can go on and on to count. From the, pre from the previous presentations, we saw the barrage of these tools that have been produced. But the closest to my mind is the participatory guide for planning the mass administration of medicine. Mm -hmm. For reasons I may not say, but probably because I, I'm directly uh, involved in putting together this tool. Now, what you find in this tool makes it a very useful uh, tool for other entity programs. For instance, the PGP gives you context-specific recommendations for implementing participatory uh, planning and implementation. For me, this is very important for other NTD programs because it affords this program's opportunity to identify the relevant stakeholders and the target users of programs. Because to my mind, public health is about the people. And it is important that everyone is given the voice so as to make input in a way that shapes the program to be able to relate to them and give them what they want. For me, these tools are, are Prospecting and they are valid and very useful for all NTD programs. Thank you. Thank you very much, James. Quite, quite, uh, very strong Sorry. point you've made. Um, let me go to Hawa. Uh, Hawa, you know, you have been involved in the countdown project uh, for a number of years now across the different countdown projects you have been involved with. What would you say for you are the key learning that you are going to use to apply in your work going forward? Hawa, we can't hear you. You're probably on a mute. Can you unmute, Hawa? Or you can use uh, James's? Yes, we can hear you. So the question, do you want me to repeat the question? No, I okay. had about the question. Okay. The question is okay to me. The key learning that I can apply in my NTD work are maintaining all the structures identified by our stakeholders during the research such as worship center, health facility to serve as fist posts during mom activities in order not to leave anyone behind. Involving the key, the key holders in mom activities, 
rolling out the case detection activity to other LGA within the state and provision of IEC materials to them. The, use, the continuous use of PGP as a guide during MAM activities, close monitoring and supervision of the activities. Thank you. Oh, well, that, that is music to my ears uh, and, and I'm not too far away from you. So just be rest assured, I'll be watching you to see that you implement all yes. this. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Let's, yes. Let's, let's, thank you very much, Howard. Let's move to some policy. Uh, so, Castle, Castle, you, you, you are a director, you head the NTDs program. And it would be good for us to hear from you in what ways have countdown research findings, at least the one from Liberia and other countries, because you've been having joint meetings. Um, in what ways have these findings been uh, able to support you as the NTD program manager in Liberia? Why? So, Sonny, thank you so much. I, I don't want to be monotonous because you, you hear a lot already from, from my colleagues who have done uh, splendid presentations and have responded to questions. But to just summarize some of the things they've said, uh, hmm. as far as the question is concerned, the policy, policy changes I talked about earlier, you saw that as a result of the findings from Canada, we did a communication strategy. And the communication strategy was based on basically finding from the uh, from, from 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 the community and from the way we've been doing MDAs before. Sometimes you do you do an intervention, you think you're doing the best, mm. but sometimes uh, some of the gaps are identified through uh, through an operational research like this that we have been part and parcel of from the onset and to now. Mm. So we did hear about the FGS. The, uh, female genital schistosome analysis. Uh, that is something that we probably initially were, in fact, weak. We didn't want to accept, thinking that we probably did not have FGS in country and only to uncover through uh, 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 countdown that we actually have FGS. And what has more in, impacted to us and what is the most uh, benefit we've gotten is the fact that we've been able now to transition just from research to now implementation of female genital cytosomiasis. A few days ago, we are just in the county's training health workers on how to scale this up in terms of sustainability. So those are part of the policy change I'm talking about. And that's what makes operational research in this form or implementation of uh, research very important because it doesn't just get findings and publish, but it mm -hmm. also goes as far as doing implementation and that's that's important for for me uh, as a young researcher and also as a program manager uh, in the bureau for, for NTD. so so those are just very few things uh, I, I would always like to mention in terms of the policy change uh, Kanda has brought uh, to us in, in our NTD implementation now Kasu, I still have another question for you because you, you said you know you're the program manager and you you will be able to connect countdown and policies. Now, one of the key aspects of the 2030 roadmap for elimination of entities is about ownership. Okay, so what has Countdown taught you about promoting country ownership of NTD programs you know, that you think you're going to share with your peers across the continent? So, and this start into what I've just discussed earlier. Because Countdown gave us the leverage to, to, to drive we drove the agenda in terms of the uh, uh, implementation research. So it was not people from Liverpool come and give us questions as to what, what is it that we need to do. Mm -hmm. We said, these are the challenges we are having. Can we do a research in this place? Mm -hmm. Find this should help us to move on how we can, uh, how it helps uh, uh, with implementation and eventually the elimination of targeted entities. So, so the ownership is the fact that we were able to, to drive the process um, and it helped us to identify the research gap. And I did talk about the, the, the profile uh, Countdown has been able to really help us to, to increase for NTDs. And lately I talked talk, talk to you about FG. Yes. One of the things that has really helped the fact that, you know, STR, sexually transmitted infection, mm -hmm. were already on an increase 
Some of them were not diagnosed uh, laboratorily, but when we introduced FGS, we saw that the number of SER has considerably reduced because most of them were identified as, most of FGS were identified as SERs when actually they were not SERs. So when we introduced the FGS, we saw that that has been turned on. Um, from, from, from the, from so, the so in terms of the, the, the thoughts about ownership, I think that was done with the fact that we took the mantle, we took the um, implementation of the uh, of plan down, and we identify areas where uh, the research will have taken place, and that helped us to take ownership of uh, of the sustainability aspect of now the, the, the lessons we have learned from, from plan down, and moving forward, uh, we're not going to be new to it. We definitely took part in the process. We understand clearly what were the findings and where we need to uh, to key on in terms of the implementation that will impact our elimination. Thank you. Thank you, Castle. Yesterday, I, I don't know whether you were opportune. There, there was a webinar on the LF, you know, elimination in Africa uh, by ESPEN. I'm hoping, and Liberia was, you know, was to present. I'm hoping that at the next webinar. You should be talking things that relate to countdown and how countdown has helped you to transform your implementation as a way for other 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 program managers to to take forward. And, uh, so we are counting on you to, to be the leader on this in, in the continent. I hope you will take up the challenge. Certainly, you can address us you on that. Thank you, Castle. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I understand that uh, Kafu. Can you hear us now, Kafu? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay, so Kafi, um, okay, we, we, we had in pre previous presentations that Ogun State is one of those states that had very little uh, support in terms of uh, NTDs, uh, but you've had countdown for a number of years now. So can you tell us what you think is the greatest impact of for you as a state program lead? Okay, Th thank you very much, sir. Uh, with the intervention of Countdown Consortium in Ogun State, we have been able to increase advocacy to our community leaders, our religious leaders, the local government chairman, and this has actually helped us to increase acceptance of MAM in our community. Also, we have also been able to identify and engage more stakeholders in the state towards participatory and inclusive planning of MAM. Now in the state, we have documents that can guide us to plan equitable MAM. Also, engagement and involvement of stakeholders that were previously missed during planning. And this has actually helped to increase ownership of NTD program in our state. Even there are some groups that were formerly not reached during MAM. Mm. But now they can assess our PC NTDs medicine. So conclusively, countdown intervention in Ogun State has translated to an overall increase of 35% therapeutic rapid coverage across the state. Wow. So thank you very much. Those are the few impacts of countdown implementation research in Ogun State that I can mention because of time. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Fantastic, Kafi. I'm, I'm really impressed. But I'm also going to leave you with a challenge. I hope that at some <laughs> point in time in the near future, you will tell us that that coverage has gone up significantly more than 35%. That is a challenge of <laughs> by, 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 by you, God's grace. Yeah, to you and Dr. <laughs> Shana, your, 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 your partner in, in the fight against NTDs in Nogu State. Thank you, Kafi. Um, Thank I, you very I much, that, sir. Yeah, I hear that we now have Gideon. Gideon, are you with us? Uh, Gideon, can you hear us? Are you, are you part of the webinar now? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, finally, my man is here. So, Gideon, uh, first, Introduce yourself. Tell us who you are and what has been for you the greatest success in this uh, countdown project. Yes, um, Mr. Udwa Gideon Twen, representing the national coordinator in the countdown project. 
I'm a program officer with the Shisto SCH program and also the focal point for human African trypanosomiasis, Nigeria. Yeah, the countdown has really done a lot. It's a study that has come timely when we are trying to review the NTD master plan. And I believe our findings and recommendations will be used in reviewing the current master plan that we are about to review. Also during the FGS study, it was an eye opener for us. Even before the study could end, we have, uh, we have planned to have a national document for this, uh, a national document for a strategy for the management of female genital schistosomiasis in Nigeria, which we don't have before this time. So it's just an eye opener for the program. And I believe the national will implement most of the recommendations of these studies. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Gideon. Um, Gideon, first, um, so I see you everywhere I go in Countdown. You know, you are, uh, for those of you who don't know, Gideon is called Baba Countdown everywhere he goes to. So, <laughs> but, so you are at the national level where tools, policy, lessons, everything that is taken from the Countdown study will be implemented. Yes. It is important, very, very important that we do not lose the momentum. I, I hear you when you say this, you'll be part of the revised master plan. But what yes. other concrete things are you willing to do to show that we do not lose this momentum? I mean, no. the, 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 the tools and the policies don't just sit on the shelf, that we take them and use them in the field. Yes, like now I am sitting in a subcommittee meeting with the, a steering committee, subcommittee for IDMs. The case study, the skin NTDs, is what we are trying to use, the study that Dr. Lurette and that we did in skin NTDs, we are trying to use it because the IDMs have been neglected over the years. Some IDMs have not been touched in the past two to five years. We are trying to use that study and expand it in the subcommittee now so that we'll work on that so that the IDMs will come up. We're really doing practical things so that we see that all these recommendations and tools will not be lying on the shelf, that we'll use them practically to move the NTD program forward. Thank you very much, Gideon. Uh, you know I'm Nigerian and I'm watching and I will keep yes. challenging you on this. Thank you very much, yes. Gideon, for your, for your time and, and, and for answering the question. Please do hang around. I'm sure we'll still have questions from our participants uh, later on. Um, yes, I also hear that we now have, Abednego, are you with us now? Hello? Yes, can you hear me, Abednego? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, nice, nice to have you. Um, so first, can you tell us uh, your name and what you have um, seen as the major achievements or one key success from the Countdown Project that you know you will always remember? Okay, uh, thank you very much for uh, having me on. Uh, I'm Ebenigo S. Wright of the entities focused pressing for Nima County. So uh, one of the key things that I have seen and experienced from the uh, Camp Down project is the, the down to up approach for the Marjors administration. Mm -hmm. uh, had seen that uh, the community engagement uh, have been very key in that approach. And now, uh, looking at the uh, MDA in Nima, there are full participation of communities in the involvement in awareness messages to the people about this major administration and their own uh, level of understanding on the approaches that are involved in this administration. Thank you very much. So I, I know you about evidence. Everything we you know you do is about evidence. The countdown research is supposed to give us the evidence for us to support whatever decisions policymakers could, would make. Um, so for you, you know, what skills have you learned from countdown that can help support your everyday work as a county NTD for purpose? What skills have you learned? 
okay, uh, I have learned a lot from Countdown. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the main things I learned uh, it is the, 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 the ability to, that they have in uh, uh, strengthening people in, in, in research, in the area of research. Mm -hmm. So now I can, I can see that uh, uh, in the area of research, uh, I'm fully involved in, in, in learning new things, in shaping the communities uh, when it comes to health and other things that will benefit the communities. Thank you, Abinoko. Just one, one last question for, for me, um, and it's about you know the, your county where you come from. So, what would you say is the main achievement of Countdown in your county? You know that has helped to support the, the, the improve the lives of people affected by NTDs. Okay, one of the key things now it is the the introduction of the the FGS pilot project in Nima County. Mm -hmm. At first, at all level of implementation at the federal primary health care center mm -hmm. people were being diagnosed especially the female for all conditions that having the sign of fgs because of lack of knowledge mm -hmm. those ladies or women were that diagnosed of sts mm -hmm. but now with the introduction of of, of fgs in the county mm -hmm. uh, people are not just diagnosing everyone of SDRs, but now they are going in depth in screening by using those checklists that were produced by the countdown team. And for that, it's a great milestone in the, in the county. And now people are seeking care to see how best they can end their long suffering and you know, illnesses when it comes to uh, female genital cystic to some Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Abenogo. And I just want to really commend you for making the efforts to join us despite the internet connectivity issues you, you face. Thank, thank you very much. Please do hang around. We will have questions from, from others. Um, from the chat box, Gideon, are you still there? I said, I, I know you will have questions. Yes, I'm still, I'm still so, here. So Gideon, you, you, you know, you mentioned the fact that, um, you know, in, in revising the NTD master plan, that the IDNs, this the innovative uh, uh, integrated case management, will be looking at the outcome from the countdown research. One of the key things that we've always struggled with is, yes, we have it in the master plan, but yes. when it comes to implementation, we always have a problem. What, what will yes. change? What's going to change? Or how can we make sure that it's not just about policy, but it is translated to implementation right down at the community level? Yes, as we are now, you know, Countdown has opened our eyes to the bottom top approach. The bottom top approach, and it is participatory. Now we cannot, with things happening now, we cannot go on either failing in the mass drug administration or anything that we do. Countdown has thought of that bottom top approach gives us a better result. Nobody runs away from the better result. Like, Ogun has been failing in most of the amounts. Now it is time to ask Ogun, what did you do to succeed? The same thing with Kaduna that has had an improved, uh, improved records in everything about NTVs. So with this, learning from this, I believe that this bottom top approach will be practicalized because these are practical things that is evident for everyone to see. With this, I think the national is ready to take it up so that every other person will key into this. Thank you very much, Gideon. And, and, and thank you all the, the panelists. We, we have had, for me, a very interesting session on looking at, uh, you know, reflecting on the past seven years of countdown, what we've learned. Um, I guess I always tell the countdown team in Nigeria when I have an opportunity that you are the silent achievers struggling during the most fantastic work that would change the lives of millions and millions of people, not just across the Para and Kaduna state, but also across Nigeria and the whole of Africa, if we can take this forward as evidence that uh, uh, the, the study can actually change how, how we do things, and how it can also lead to the change of lives of people. We still have a few minutes, five minutes, uh, so we've done fantastically well.
but there's still opportunity for you to ask any question. If you want to, just drop it on the chat box. If there are no questions, I will now hand over to, to Rachel. Thank you very much for the opportunity and uh, wishing everybody uh, a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you so much to uh, Sunday for that fantastic chairing. It is very challenging when you have people on in so many different locations. So I really appreciate that Sunday and also to all the panelists. I think the uh, answers that you gave were very insightful and, and I really appreciated them. Um, so just in summation, just for a couple of minutes, I wanted to show you this fantastic drawing that's been done. It represents some of the key countdown findings that you heard about today, but also others from previous years, work from Cameroon, work from Ghana as well. Um, it shows the cross-cutting themes around increasing access, strengthening capacity of health workers and community drug distributors, encouraging participation to ensure co-ownerships, stigma alleviation, and the development of new networks and collaborations. Obviously, it's a very busy uh, picture, so we're going to share it on Twitter and other things. But I think it's just a very eye-catching way to capture some of the, the findings that Countdown has um, worked on over the last seven years. Next slide, please. Oh, back. One. Sorry, we've skipped forward. Okay, so we'll, we do have to go back on the slides, but I just wanted to say that the speakers and the panelists have really highlighted that placing those affected by NTD central to all of its research the Countdown Programme has worked with implementers, policy makers, NGOs, academics to help tackle some of the biggest challenges facing NTD services. As you have heard, much of Countdown research has generated knowledge about the realities of increasing the reach of NTD treatment in different contexts. The programme has produced evidence to contribute to reducing mortality, morbidity and poverty associated with NTDs through increasing knowledge and capacity in line with the NTD roadmap. We've heard examples from each layer of the broader health environment, from policy to systems, from community to family, and of course the individual. All of the tools mentioned today are freely available on the Countdown website. We'll put the uh, website details into the chat. We also have on there summaries of our research, policy briefs, case studies and peer reviewed papers. Thank you for the slides back. Um, and that next slide, please. Um, and please just indulge me for a moment, but as it's our last meeting, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to the teams in all the countries, to all our co-researchers and everyone who has supported us over the last seven years. It has been a fantastic partnership to be part of, and I know that you and the work will continue to flourish. So I just wanted to end on that note to just say thank you to everybody. Um, it has been a pleasure to work for the Countdown uh, programme, and I know that the findings are going to continue. Um, thank you, everybody, for, if we just, next slide, please. Here are some of the people that we've worked with. These have been our direct partners, but obviously our reach and our networks have gone far beyond that. So thank you very much to all of the presenters today and to the panelists and of course to the chair of the panel. It really has been a, um, a fantastic webinar and I really appreciate all your help with uh, giving all of the findings and presenting them in such an engaging manner. So thank you very much. Uh, Twitter is alight with all of the um, comments and, and, and retweets and everything from it. So please do look on there. And in the chat, there's the um, countdown website where everything will be. So just wanted to say thank you for your time today. All the best. Thank you very much, Rachel. Uh, and on behalf of the Maximise Your Time team, we, um, it has been our pleasure to support you today. We will now end the session. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>